Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. I've decided to uh, go ahead and, uh, at this time, publish an update, a prophecy update concerning the 2021 timeline, rapture timeline, that I published back in the fall of 2018. As uh, promised, I have continued to look into this uh, further, and so what you're about to, to hear in this video is my latest conclusions concerning all of that. Now, uh, this has actually been a dreaded video. Uh, I'm, I'm not in, in, the, in the least bit uh, as excited as you might think that I am about doing this. I've, I've really found it of, of great benefit to be uh, doing verse-by-verse -verse studies and talking about spiritual growth and so on and so forth. Uh, that's not to say I'm not excited about the rapture. It's just that... Uh, it, unless you have, and I say this as humbly as I, as I know how, unless you've done the research I've done in the video you're about to watch, uh, you may find it more confusing uh, than exciting. Uh, the data itself does excite me. Uh, I'm just, not, I don't know if, I don't really feel all that qualified to present it in a way in which it's not going to confuse a lot of people. So I've tried to make this as simple as I know how. So let's just get started. First of all, it's not about the 6,000 years end because not a single person, religion, translation, or calendar in the entire history of mankind has been able to draw an accurate consensus as it regards that question of when the 6,000 years ends. The results have been so widely varied and, and it's, it's not particularly even a Jewish question when there were no Jews the week that God created and the countdown clock began. It's about the rebirth of Israel. If, if we should be looking at anything it ought to be the rebirth of Israel, the fulfillment of the last prophetic event required in order for our Lord to return. And the generation that would see that. That's what it's about. You'll hear me mention the 6,000 years in this video, but I wouldn't uh, put a lot of, uh, of confidence in that. What I really want you to, to focus in on is all the rest of the data, which I believe that, that cannot extend beyond 80 years. Now, I've gone through all of the, the data that, that I've associated with this video, and I've, I've looked at it really closely, and what I see is I see that it's supported by at least 10 factors one being spring. I believe that there's more evidence for the rapture occurring in spring than in fall, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Another is the, the dispensational aspect of it, that this, the rapture primarily deals with the church, not Israel. And then there's the generational aspect, it's the supporting evidence all of this, I believe, you could look, look at it as supporting evidence. The generational aspect, the 80 years. There's the days themselves. The number of days along a timeline, which is biblical. We have 1260 days talked about, 1290 days, 1335 days. And so those days are important. And then the dates that these, this timeline lands on, those dates are of, of extreme interest, as you'll see. And then there's the scriptural aspect, the verse, the actual chapter and verse, the scriptural aspect of this. 
Song of Solomon supports spring. There's the historical uh, accounts, so the historical, just the history aspect that I believe supports it. God's absolute supreme sovereignty, His divine sovereignty, I believe tends to, to add support to this because we're going to be looking at some numbers. Numerically, it, there, there seems to be some evidence of support. And then there's uh, some heavenly celestial aspects to it, what you'd call uh, celestial. We'll just call it eclipse that I believe also lends support. So I see 10 factors that, that, that tend to strongly support the data. <clears throat> now let me just say at the outset that I, I'm, I'm not asking anyone to agree with me on anything. That's number one. Number two, and I believe this is just as important, that you realize right from the outset that I'm not being dogmatic about anything. I'm assuming. I'm saying if. If this be true, then this would be true. So you've got to take that, you know, just for what it is. I'm not setting a date. I'm, I am projecting. This is what they failed to understand uh, through this channel several years back. The timeline that I presented back in 2017 or, or uh, maybe a few timelines that followed were projections. That's what they were. I wasn't saying that we are definitely going to be out of here on such and such a date. What I was saying was that based upon all the evidence that I was seeing, this is the most likely. That's what I was saying. And I don't believe that anybody can study this analysis seriously and not be amazed unless, unless they want to believe in multiple coincidences. So let's assume, for the sake of argument, just to begin with here, let's assume that Torah calendar's creation year date is correct. May 10. Actually, May 5, the first day of creation. I'm, I'm talking about the day Adam was created on day 6. May, that would be May 10. That would be spring as we know it representing new life. And I have always found, folks, I've always found the four seasons interesting. I don't think that there, that we, we have four seasons just to, well, just to kind of give us, okay, winter gives us a break from the heat of summer. Spring, you know, the rains give us a break from the dry season of summer. I, I, I just, I, I, I have a very difficult time seeing these four seasons as just have as having nothing to do whatsoever with what we're about to talk about in fact uh i will suggest that that being that that spring represents new life the the new life of spring the growth of summer that follows the fall of mankind the fall of mankind, followed by the death of winter. And folks, I won't have time in this video to go over the way to evidence that's, that favors spring over fall as far as, as the return of our Lord is concerned. And I'm talking about both the rapture and the second coming. But let's start out by looking at this day. This is uh, Torah calendar, creation day six, Adam is created. Now, most of you are aware of the fact that in 1948, Israel was reborn. Eighty years, if you add 80 years to that, that's a full, complete, full generation. That takes us to 2028. And if we subtract seven years, we come to 2021, and we are now in the year 2020. As for the days of our life, they contain 70 years, or if due to strength, 80 years, yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for soon it is cut off and we fly away, Psalms 90, verse 10. I believe that the cutoff will happen when Christ 
appears at the second coming. Now, I could be wrong. We could go the 80 years and the rapture occur at the 80 years. But I'm making another assumption here. I'm making another assumption. 1948 plus 80, 2028 minus 7, 2021, rapture. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 8, to the church at Philadelphia, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength. Here we see that same phrase mentioned there. And hast kept my word, and hast not denied my, my name, that no man can shut this door. I take that to mean that the church cannot remain on earth the full 80 years. So 1948, Israel reborn, plus 80, a full generation, equals 2028, minus the seven years, tribulation is 2021. Now Christ returning in 2028 means that Israel would then be 80. Are you hearing me? 1948 plus 80, 2028, minus the seven years, 2021. Now, assuming Pentecost, May 17, 2021, is the rapture, let's just assume that for a moment. That's May 17, 2021. If that is the date of the rapture, if, and, and I want you to write that word if down, just write down on a piece of paper, Steve said if, and stick that to your fridge. Then Jesus would return 2550 days later on May the 10th, the day Adam was created. Did you hear me? He would return May 10, the day Adam was created. 2550 days exact, May 10 the day Adam was created. The following day after second Passover on May 9, followed by the completion of the 80 years, May 14, 2028, because May 14, 1948 to May 14, 2028 is 80 years. The biblically correct number of days between the rapture and the second coming must be 2550, 1290, and 1260. That's scriptural. 2550 days. Also, assuming that Pentecost, May 17, 2021, is the rapture, then eight days later on May 25 is a total lunar eclipse. Eight days later. Now, this would be the first eclipse after the rapture took place. And lunar eclipses, I remind you, are always a sign to Israel. Now, strangely, there was a total lunar eclipse on May 17, 3980 B.C., on Adam's eighth day. And the sixth, the last day of the week to be followed by a Sabbath. This would have been the first eclipse that man had ever seen. A fully mature Adam would have been seven days old. Now, I want you to note that both the, these eclipses occurred on the 13th day of the Hebrew month, though they were, according to the, the Hebrew calendar, they were 5,993 years apart. May 10, 3980, Adam created to May 10, 2021, 6,000 solar years. The only years Adam would have known since his calendar, quote unquote, was above his head in the heavens. May 17, 3980, Adam's eighth day, he was created on the 10th. To May 17, 2021, Pentecost is 6,000 years. 
Perhaps Adam was given dominion for 6,000 years on that eighth day. No, nobody knows. But Pentecost is May 23 on the civil calendar. I'm showing you May 17th on the Hebrew calendar. And we know that eight always equals new beginning. Eight would represent the eternal state after the thousand year reign of Christ. 6,000 years man rules, 1,000 years kingdom. And then, well, that's 7,000. And then eternity begins. That's eight. New beginning. Eternity. Now listen carefully. I do not believe that the thousand year reign of Christ on earth will be anything but just what it is. 6,000 solar years for the nations of the earth. All the nations of the earth. So let's look at this. Let's start with this rapture, May 17, 2021. That's Pentecost. The rapture is accompanied by the last trump. The last trump, historically, if you look at the trumpets, historically, it signified victory from battle. That's really what the, the Paul, I believe, is referring to when he, when he uses that phrase, last trump. He's not talking about Donald J. Trump. Although it is interesting that Trump could be our last president before the rapture. God does tend to have a, a sense of humor. So the church has become victorious. Now the Jews, they celebrate the giving of the Torah, the law, at Mount Sinai on Pentecost. Mount Sinai was the only other time that God blew a trumpet. The first Pentecost, folks, the first Pentecost, when the church began, okay, was according to Torah calendar, was May 14, 34 AD. Go look at it, all right? And that happens to be the exact date that Israel was reborn in 1948. Now, I find that absolutely amazing. Thus, the church was born, that's rebirth, out of or away from Adam, in 34 A.D. on the same date that Israel was reborn in 1948, May 14, 1948. So where does that take us on the timeline? Well, if we go by the biblical number of days, it takes us to the beginning of the tribulation period, 30 days forward, 30 days there is a gap, folks, 30 days of the 1290 days from that which is taken, taken away, that is us, there'll be 1290 to the abomination of desolation. But we know that the, the two witnesses witnessed 1260 days. So it's the rapture that takes place. There's a 30-day gap. The two witnesses begin to witness for 1260 days, which goes to the midpoint. Are you following me? I've explained this in numerous times in the past. So 30 days forward to the beginning of the two witnesses' ministry is June the 16th, 2021. Now this is the fifth day or sixth day of the, of the fourth month. It's the fifth day of the fourth month. Tammuz on the Hebrew calendar. Now, if you turn in your Bible to Ezekiel 1.1, you see something extraordinary. It came about in the 30th year on the fifth day of the fourth month. This is that day, the day on our timeline where we're looking at the tribulation actually beginning or, or the, the, two, the two witnesses begin their ministry. While I was by the river, Chabar, among the exiles, the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So therefore, the beginning of the tribulation period on our timeline and the ministry of the two witnesses would occur on the same date Ezekiel received his vision from God concerning what? His displeasure with his people Israel and coming judgment. Same day. 
This is one reason why I, I titled that video two years ago, Mind Blown. Same day. If beginning with Pentecost, if you go along the timeline, this is this is these are the dates that you land on, folks. You can't make this up. I I this is not something that I've structured on my own. This is just how it comes out. The midpoint, the date that the two witnesses are killed and the abomination of desolation occurs would be November 27, 2024. Now we've gone through the, two, the, the 1260 days to the midpoint where the, the two witnesses are killed, the temple is defiled, desecrated, the abomination of desolation occurs November 27, 2024. This is halfway through the tribulation. November 27, 2024. Now, this is just 28 days before Christmas. Um, I'm going to show you here. I hope, hopefully, you'll see it on the screen. Just a simple Google search. Hanukkah in 2024 is Wednesday, December 25, which happens to be the, the day that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. I base this on the amazing 271 conception day period uh, analysis of pregnancy. Now, it was uh, Samuel that said, a woman becomes pregnant and gives birth after 271 days to 273 days. And the numerical equivalent of the word for pregnancy, okay, herion, the Hebrew word for pregnancy is 271. Is that a coincidence? Now, according to the Hebrew calendar, Jesus was born, his birth date. It's clearly stated right there on the calendar, birth of the Messiah, Yom Teruah, Day of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets, September 11. Well, that rings a bell. Now let's back up 271 days to see when he was conceived. If we do that, if we back up precisely 271 days, it takes us to not just to Hanukkah, it takes us to the first day of Hanukkah, December the 14th. The first day of Hanukkah. And, and for those of you who know anything about Hanukkah, well, it's... There's, there's some temple stuff going on there. So, for a fact, the average duration of human pregnancy, even according to, not just Samuel, but according to science, is 271 days. The Hebrew word for pregnancy equals 271. Jesus was born, according to the Hebrew calendar, on, feast, on a Feast of Trumpets, September 11. America was attacked on a September 11, September 11, two, minus 271 days lands on the first day of Hanukkah, the day that the Holy Spirit would have conceived the Christ child in Mary. Hanukkah aligns itself with Christmas in 2024. At the midpoint when the two witnesses are killed, what do they do? They send gifts to one another. Revelation 11.10 And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Hanukkah aligns itself with Christmas in 2024. At the midpoint when the two witnesses are killed, they send gifts to one another. And what would a November 27 midpoint remind the Jews of? We're talking about November 27. That's 25 Kislev in Jewish history. Well, on that date, just some, there were some interesting things that happened. The foundation of the second temple was complete. The portable sanctuary in the wilderness was completed. Hanukkah was established. Okay? The first night of Hanukkah, not just Hanukkah, Hanukkah day one, the day 
I believe the above data reveals Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Will the temple be defiled or desecrated again on the date in which Hanukkah was established because that temple was rededicated by the Jews after it being defiled on the date commemorating the rededication of the second temple in Jerusalem at the time of the Maccabean revolt against the Seleucid Empire and on the date it it appears Jesus the true temple are you hearing me was conceived the first day of Hanukkah well you've got to decide This takes us to the second coming, the return. As previously stated, rapture to return is 2550 days. Pentecost, May 17, 2021, if we go 2550 days forward into the future, it takes us to May 10, 2028, the date Adam was created. Therefore, according to Torah calendar, May 10, 2028, would be, we're looking at the second coming here now. It would be 6,007 years since Adam was created. So from rapture to return, the church would depart on the feast day in which it began, Pentecost, and Christ would return on the date that God created Adam. I'm going to say that again. From rapture to return, the church would depart on the feast day in which it began, Pentecost, and Christ would return on the date that God created Adam. That's how it works out, folks. Jesus would return, defeat his enemies, judge the nations, fulfill the three remaining fall feasts, then the kingdom would begin. I don't know why so many Christians believe that the day that Jesus sets his foot down on the Mount of Olives, that the kingdom has to begin. It doesn't. In fact, that is not what Scripture says. It's not what we read in Scripture. What we read is that He defeats His enemies. He's seen returning from what, we, what is now modern-day Iran with His garments drenched in the blood of His enemies, which I won't mention in this video. YouTube has a, a strange habit of censoring every video that in which I mention a certain religion. So he would return, defeat his enemies, but then he separates the sheep and the goats on his left and his right, folks. He judges the nations, and he fulfills the three remaining fall feasts. Then the kingdom would begin. And Scripture demands that there be a total of 26, 25 days from rapture to the kingdom. 25, 50 days, folks, rapture to return. 26, 25 days from rapture to the kingdom. Why is, why is there an extra 75 days? Because it's 13, 35 days from the midpoint to the kingdom. I hope you got that. So the, the sequence is 1290, 30 of that 1290, before the two witnesses who, who begin their ministry, who witness 1260 days to the midpoint. Rapture, 30 day gap, 1260 days, the two witnesses minister to the midpoint. 1260 days great tribulation when the antichrist reigns it's it's considered the the great tribulation the seven years is not the great tribulation the seven years is the tribulation the last half is the great tribulation but there are said to be 1335 days from the midpoint to the kingdom so total days from rapture to kingdom 26 25 days which takes our timeline to July 23rd, 2028. Creation Day 1, May 5, 
according to the Hebrew calendar, 3980 BC, to the kingdom, July 24, 2028, is 6,007 years and 80 days. Now, 2018, we know 2018 marked 70 years from Israel being reborn in 1948. 2018, the year of the Revelation 12 sign was 2017. 2017 was also the year that President Trump assumed office. 2021 would mark 73 years since Israel's rebirth in 1948. The final seven years marked for judgment. God's pouring out His wrath on unbelieving mankind. Therefore, on Pentecost, May 17, 2021, the church would depart on Pentecost, the date in which it began in 34 A.D., which is the date Israel was reborn in 1948, where Jesus would then return when Israel turns 80 on the date man was created. Remember that Israel's promised blessings regarding the kingdom are earthly, folks, earthly, man, not heavenly, the church. Those of you who are, who are a little bit more up on dispensationalism, you understand that Israel's blessings that God promised Israel are earthly. It, I'm not saying that Jews aren't going to wind up in heaven. What I'm saying is, is that God's promises and blessings to His people Israel are earthly. That's why there's a, heavenly new, a new heavenly city, the New Jerusalem. Okay, Ours is, he is, is heavenly, theirs is earthly. It's a restoration to the land of Israel. It's Christ's kingdom on earth. Now, as previously stated, the second coming would be May 10, 2028, the date Adam was created. Now, May 10 in Jewish history, that is the 16th of ER, the second month of the ecclesiastical year on the Hebrew calendar, not, not the civil, the, the ecclesiastical year. That's the second month. May 10, 16th of ER. What happened on that day? Let's take a look. On this very day, manna, the bread from heaven, which sustained the children of Israel during their 40 years of wandering through the desert, began to fall on the 16th of ER. One month after the Exodus. Manna falling on the day that Adam was created. Manna falling on the day Christ would return at the second coming. Now in 70 AD, Titus and the Roman army laid siege upon Jerusalem, greatly weakening its defenders. On the 16th of Iyar, the Romans raised the middle wall of Jerusalem. I'm talking about the, the siege of Jerusalem. The city was burned, its inhabitants were massacred, and the temple was destroyed on the 9th of Av. The siege of Jerusalem was on the day Adam was created. Manna falling on the day Christ would return at the second coming. Israel regards the month of Iyar as a propitious time for healing. Iyar is referred to as the month of radiance or budding. Ziv in Hebrew. In fact, the word Iyar in Hebrew is an acronym for the phrase Ani Hashern. Ropesha, I believe. I don't pronounce Hebrew correctly. Which means, I am God, your healer. It is a month that is especially auspicious for all forms of healing. Something else of interest is Dachau was the first Nazi concentration camp and the model for all the other concentration camps. And during the war, 200,000 Jews were housed in Dachau. I believe I'm saying that right. More than 30,000 were killed and tens of thousands died due to the conditions and the spread of disease in the camp. The camp was freed 
by the 45th Infantry Division of the U.S. 7th Army on the 16th of Yar, 1945, and that is it, and I am glad I've come to the end of this, because now I can go back. I've fulfilled my promise in updating you on what I, I promised to continue to look, to keep looking into, which I have, and I'm hopeful. Look, people, I, I just want you people to know I am hopeful. I look uh, with great eagerness toward uh, his return. I believe it is the most likely timeline. I believe it's an amazing timeline. I believe that everything that, that you've heard in this video is it fits together so concisely as to, well, but, but then so did the timeline back in 2017. All I can tell you folks is this. One of the things that, and I don't mind saying this, one of the things that I find a little bit disturbing is how that so many people can so long for his appearing and yet care so little about the verse-by-verse, -verse, meticulous, sobering study, a feasting on his word, which draws us near now, in the, at the present time, in our walk in our relationship with Christ. There's nothing that can replace that, folks. Nothing. No amount of prophecy, no amount of, I guess, I, what I would call entertainment, can holds a candle to just simply feasting on His Word, looking at what Christ has done for us. All of the blessings that we received in Christ, Look, I could I could just go on and preach all day on that. I I have been asked to go back to a verse by verse study uh, through some book in the New Testament, and it appears that the overwhelming uh, consensus there is that I I go through begin with Jude. Uh, it's just one one chapter. Uh, so I think I'm going to begin a verse-by-verse -verse study through the book of Jude. For those of you who are interested in following us through Jude, look, I love you all. I truly do. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.